Welcome to News West 9's Uniquely West Texas. From the sandy dunes of Monahans to the high peaks of the Davis Mountains, our little slice of the Lone Star State is truly a wonder to behold. Tonight, we'll show you the place where, for most of West Texas, life began. Big Spring. We visited many places across Big Spring to show you how truly unique this gem of West Texas really is. You've likely been to many of these places or may be interested in checking them out, but what you may not know is the history behind some of those places. And to get to the heart of the story, we went back to the beginning. Located 39 miles east of Midland along I-20, Big Spring is the county seat of Howard County. It's home to around 28,000 West Texans. It sits on the crossroads of I-20 and Highway 87, making it the midpoint for many journeys across West Texas. But once you hear about what they have to offer, Big Spring may be your next destination. We all know that temperatures out here in West Texas can get brutally hot and sources of fresh water are scarce. That's why the Big Spring of Big Spring is so important. It served as the initial watering hole for many who have called West Texas home from the Comanche tribes of the Great Plains to the settlers who established the town itself. Today, Comanche Trail Park serves as a place for West Texans to enjoy this oasis in the desert and as a monument to the history we all share. Alex Camerata has the story. It's home to the spring that gave Big Spring its name, Comanche Trail Park, over 400 acres of land right here in Big Spring, Texas. But what's even more interesting is the history behind the park and how it all got started. In fact, Big Spring wasn't always called Big Spring. Virtually every city uh, on Interstate 20 west of Weatherford is here because of this site right here. Uh, Midland and Odessa exist because of this site. Comanche Trail Park has just about everything to offer. A 6,900-seat limestone amphitheater, an 18-hole golf course, tennis courts, baseball fields, playgrounds, pavilions, but before all the modern day features, the spring was a watering hole and a meeting place for the Native American Comanche tribe. The first settlers here at the spring uh, came in in about 1880, expecting the TMP Railroad to be built. Uh, it was being built from Fort Worth to El Paso. And this was one of the stopping points because of the water. Prior to the highways, the rail came they needed the spring for a dependable source of water. It's the only source of water south of here. As with anything, water is life. And so in West Texas, water is limited to in certain areas. The Comanche Nation did use this area as one of their places because they could get water freely for their horses and themselves, as well as they could go on top of the mountain. And on a clear afternoon, you could see for 14 straight miles. So they had the ability to be able to be forewarned of anyone coming at any given time. It was almost like an oasis for them. And they would come down here mostly during the winter time. It was known as their playground because they could come here and uh, jump in the water and uh, really in, have a, an enjoyable experience. With, plus, there were buffalo everywhere. And so the buffalo were their form of, of uh, everything, you know, their clothing source, their homes, you know, they built uh, teepees with them. And uh, so everything was used for their living purposes. From its rich Native American history to its modern day design, Comanche Trail Park truly isn't just unique to the city of Big Spring, it's unique to all of West Texas. It is a large, unique location that gives you a chance to do from everything from walking to swimming to playing, and it gives you a sense of the innate beauty that is West Texas. There's nothing like it in the whole wide world. Well, from a watering hole to a thriving park, seems like Comanche Trail has always been a big part of the community. And I know it's only July, but one of my favorite things the park does every year is the Comanche Trail of Lights. It's just a beautiful park to drive through during the Christmas holiday. And a fun fact, it takes about a month and a half to set up the displays which includes to up to more than a million lights. Well, as Alex just showed us, Big Spring has a rich history and the people there are so proud of it. 
they brought it to life. Earlier this year, the Heritage Museum of Big Spring hosted a night at the museum, and just like the movie, actors from the local community portrayed characters and real life figures in exhibits. It was just that we tried it last year as a quick little side note of sorts here at the museum, and it was such a popular event that everybody wanted more. So this year, we decided to have more exhibits come alive. And the community sure did love it, but the popularity of the event comes from more than just the entertainment factor. To the people who call Big Spring home, they're just happy and excited to share the history of their city. Well, it means a lot to us and to the community. We've had a lot of great response of people wanting to come to this, and we are a nonprofit organization, and this is part of our uh, mission is to, to teach about Big Springs local heritage and history. Well, how cool is that? I hope they do it again sometime soon. Don't go anywhere. You've heard the history of the Big Spring of Big Spring, but do you want to more learn more about the people? Well, after the break, we'll tell you about the high flying men and women of West Texas. Welcome back. We've learned about the origins of the city of Big Spring from its humble beginnings as a Native American watering hole to its important role in the settlement of West Texas. But this town has another history of duty and service to the nation during one of the greatest wars in human history. When World War II broke out, cities all across the country stepped up to do their part and help the war effort any way they could. Big Spring was no exception. The city was the site of a training facility for bomber crews of the Army Air Corps and later a fully fledged Air Force base. Today, a museum stands in its place to keep the memory of those who served alive for years to come. Hunter Alcocer takes us on a brief tour of the Hangar 25 Museum. The Hangar 25 Air Museum has been in operation in Big Spring for 20 plus years. Its history goes back much further than that, though. Originally, our doors opened during, uh, in 1941. We were the Big Spring Bombardier Pilot Training School, an Army Air Corps training facility. This facility was one of the places pilots came to learn the ropes of one of the Allies' greatest assets that helped change the tide of the war in our favor, the Norden bomb site. During World War II, pilots would come in and bombardiers were uh, learning the Norden bomb site. The Norden bomb site is one of the biggest and most important machinery that was used to help us win World War II. Even after World War II had long ended, the facility still had a purpose to fulfill. It became a base for the Air Force, which was still a relatively new branch at the time. At the end of World War II, we then were opened as an Air Force base here. We were known as Webb Air Force Base. We were opened in 1951. Uh, we trained during the Korean War, the Vietnam War. Today, the Hangar 25 Air Museum serves as a reminder of the contributions the city of Big Spring gave for the country during one of the most important wars in history. It's a point of pride in the Big Spring community, and they do a lot to ensure the museum is around for generations to come. We have a lot of community pride. Uh, we're one of the very, very lucky small museums that's fully helped by their city that we are connected to. The city of Big Spring has been very grateful and gracious to us as a museum for the, our 20 plus years that we've been in existence. Whether you're a resident or just a visitor to Big Spring, the Hanker 25 Air Museum wants to share their history with anyone that comes their way. If anybody's out here, we're always, we love visitors. We love any, anyone that's affiliated with the military to come and visit us. We're always wanting to learn. You never know who you meet walking through these doors. By the way, admission is free to the museum. They're open every Tuesday through Saturday. And if you would like to experience all that Hangar 25 has to offer, here's a fun opportunity for you and the whole family. Next Saturday, July 15th, Hangar 25 is hosting a scavenger hunt at the museum. That will be taking place from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And there will even be some free ice cream for the kiddos. 
Just an hour to the east, the legacy of wartime aviation continues in West Texas. We're talking about women Air Force service pilots, or WASPs for short. Here's more about the women who stepped up to help out in World War II. During World War II, Air Force General Henry Hap Arnold knew that the war would be won or lost in the air. This meant there would be a shortage of male pilots here in the U.S. for aviation-related services. But luckily, a solution would present itself. There were women who stepped up and said, we're pilots, we could do, we could do your stateside things. And you know, they were turned down multiple times, but eventually they were heard and, um, and the program started. It got started in late 1942. The program became known as the Women Air Force Service Pilots Program, or WASP for short. The training for the program was done in Sweetwater, Texas at the Avenger Field Airport. These women came from all walks of life, but what united them was the desire to serve their country through their love for aviation any way they could. They, they ferried aircraft, they towed targets for live gunnery practice, they did test flights for, um, for airplanes that needed to be repaired and had just been repaired, strafing missions, um, you know, and they, they would carry non-flying personnel, just anything that had to be done within the U.S. Even if at the time they technically weren't a part of the military and therefore wouldn't get the same benefits, that didn't stop them. Um, they weren't part of the military. They were under military discipline and control, but they had none of the benefits of being in the military. And so 38 of the ladies died um, in service and um, they were given no benefits in death. Uh, and it didn't stop them from flying. I mean, they weren't in it for the glory. They weren't in it for the benefits. They just did it. The legacy of the WASPs is more than just helping out during wartime. They led the way for all women in the country to eventually enter the aviation industry and even fly combat missions in the military later down the road. You know, every story has a beginning, and this is, is, this is that beginning of women in aviation. And by them coming in and, and opening those doors, now we have four generations of women who have come after them. From flying high to buildings that touch the sky, we'll introduce you to the tallest building in Big Spring with a story behind every corner. Well, welcome back. You've heard the story of how Big Springs water fostered many of the surrounding communities here in West Texas, including Midland and Odessa. You've also learned about the community's long tradition of service to the nation in times of need. Now we turn our attention to the town itself, which has its own share of stories and history. As the city of Big Spring grew and attracted folks from across the country, the time eventually came for the construction of a hotel that could hold them all. And let's just say Big Spring spared no expense. Standing 15 stories tall, the hotel settles is the city's largest building and would look out of place in the skyline in Midland. The 90 year old hotel now stands as both a place to relax while visiting and as a window into the past. Rachel Robinson explored the hotel and shows us what you can expect as a prospective guest. A lot of people are just astonished to, to find this big, tall building here in Big Spring. The 15 story, 150 room hotel opened in 1930. At the time, Hotel Settles was the tallest building between El Paso and Fort Worth. The hotel has had some famous guests, including Elvis Presley and President Hoover. A lot of the rooms on the third floor are going to replicate the original rooms. The lobby area has been restored to look like it did originally, um, including a lot of the plaster work that you see around here. And then there's a 1930s Ford in the lobby as well to represent the year that this hotel was built. The hotel shut down in the 80s, but was renovated in 2013 and given new life. Back in the day, it was a very, very big part of this community. Um, it sat in the middle of downtown like it currently does. Um, it, it had a pharmacy, it had the restaurant, um, and so it's well known across the United States. The goal, to make hotel settles feel like home for those near and far. Brent Ryan is actually from Big Spring. So for him, I think this is home. Um, and he wants to share his home with other people. And he wants to give people that same feeling of this is their home. So if you want to travel back in time, book your stay at the Hotel Settles. We just have a lot to offer here. And we really hope that people take the opportunity to make the short drive and come out and check it out. Perfect. Rachel Robinson, Newswest 9. 
Well, you definitely need to check out Hotel Settles the next time you're over in Big Spring. Our Jason Freund is actually there right now, seeing everything they have to offer. Jason, who's there with you? All right, thanks guys. I'm out here at the hotel right now and I have with me right now Nick Statzer, the Director of Food and Beverage here with the hotel. First, I gotta ask you right now, the grill seems to be pretty popular right now. What's, the, what's one of the big selling points out there with the grill? Yeah, so our Settles Grill is a Texas comfort inspired new American grill. And we do entertain guests from here in Big Spring as well as the broader community. And um, I think one of the big selling points is the authentic sense of place that we have here. And now another question I need to ask, you were telling me earlier about the bar, it used to be a former pharmacy. Can you give a little more details on that? Absolutely. So the pharmacy has long been this community's watering hole. Ever since the property opened in 1930, it was an actual pharmacy in the same exact space. So now we feature a vibrant bar area as well as a more relaxed parlor side. It's great for conversation and has a, a real comfortable living room feel to it. And what do you think drives people the most to the bar or to the grill? I think it's the community itself. I think people love to come here for all kinds of different reasons, whether it's just sharing some snacks with some friends and enjoying some conversation, or even coming in for a more formal anniversary or kind of a fine dining experience. Um, that's what drives people in and, and keeps them coming back. All right, well, thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate the time, and it is a beautiful hotel you have here and a beautiful bar and a beautiful grill. Well, guys, that's all from me out here at the hotel. Back to you guys in the studio. Jason, thanks. Well, we've learned about the spring that gave the town its name, the history of the town and its great big hotel and the contributions of the people of Big Spring and what they made to this country. Dan, I'd say that this community is absolutely positively uniquely West Texas. That's right, Crystal. Everywhere has a story. But I'd say few are as interesting or as deeply rooted in the history of West Texas as Big Spring is. Without this little town and its springs, there'd be no Midland, no Odessa, barely any West Texas to speak of. Well, thanks for joining us on this journey to Big Spring, everyone. Before we go, we'd like to give you a little taste of where we're headed next for our uniquely West Texas tour. Our next stop is none other than Fort Stockton. We'll take you through the city's most historic locations, including its iconic jailhouse. Originally, it was built in 1883, and it was a lot smaller. The building that you see today was expanded in... Uh, what well, completion was in 1913. Well, you can catch the second installment of our Uniquely West Texas series next Friday at 6.30 p.m. Thanks for watching, everyone. We have your full forecast coming up after the break.